I'm ready, yes. <laughs> oh, there she is. It's Miami Pride. Oh, I love those shoes. <laughs> and today, the city's queer community is honoring its most mature couples with their own float in the parade. Ken and Rich, 21 years. For the third year in a row. Okay, 72-year-old Hector Zuazo and his husband Bob are among the honorees. When you come out of the closet when you're 46 years old, I mean, I, my husband and I were both late bloomers because we went through so much nonsense, you know, mm -hmm. just, it was hell, really. Do you have a lot of young LGBTQ people that, that you can kind of interact with? I used to have a lot more because I used to be a teacher. Not anymore because I, I'm, I've been retired for 12 years now. You know, I kind of lost contact with them. Which is why this year, Hector is trying something new. He's going to an LGBT mentorship pairing event, aimed at connecting older and younger queer people who otherwise wouldn't meet. What are you looking for in a mentor? I'll be 31 soon. Mm -hmm. So most of my friends are the same age as me. So it'd be really cool to talk to someone that's like over that hump. When I was 21 years old, the first time I went to a Pride Parade, I was completely struck when I saw all these old queer people because it was the first time in my life that I had any image of all of what it could be like to be queer when I was 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Michael! As the CEO for the nonprofit SAGE, America's largest organization dedicated to queer elders, how, how do we build those connections Michael Adams thinks that intergenerational connections are vital for the community. This is a community that isn't built around traditional family structures and generations. And then we have the fact that we, we lived through and fought through and died through the AIDS epidemic. We lost a whole generation of people. And this is an experiment on how we bring that all back together. I think that there needs to be more intergenerational dialogue. I wouldn't you feel really a need call, for that? Well, I think that the community feels a need for that. Because I feel like youth need to know what it was like coming out in an era where you can be put in jail. Yeah. Okay. So we can be a family to them and they can be family to us. Is there something specific about the LGBTQ community that makes it harder to connect in between generations? If you don't have a family member that's out, then it's very hard to connect. So you need events like this to help make that connection. Right. So for the speed mentoring, there's gonna be three rounds. We want you to come out of this with at least three potential matches. Are you ready? Miami? Yeah, I was born here. Growing up for me wasn't easy. And I know that I could learn a lot from you because the way you grew up was not the way I grew up. <laughs> but um, I made it through. So I was curious, uh, were, you, were you gay or were you out when you were in Cuba? I, I was gay since I was seven years old, okay? So unfortunately, my father was a homophobic. Well, he was because he's dead now. He was a homophobic. So a couple of times that he caught me playing with my next door neighbor, he beat the hell out of me. I would scare the living crap out of me. So it, I regressed into the closet very intensely yeah. until I was 46. So I got married, uh, obviously that didn't work out with a female. I said, this is like a bottle of champagne. You're gonna, you know, now that you got the coke out of the way, you're gonna explode. You didn't have you know, that experience or? My experience was different. Uh, my parents were actually very accepting, which was unfortunate. So. That, 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 that's beautiful. Very lucky. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Loneliness and isolation are huge problems for senior citizens. But those problems are even more pronounced for America's 1.5 million LGBT elders, who are twice as likely to live alone and four times less likely to have kids. So events like these aim to bridge the generational gap 
I do my podcast. I mean, my friends, we have these conversations about love and about dating. On which, on which, sta- on which station? So it's actually online. So it's on iTunes. What? iTunes. Okay. What do you think? We have the internet. We have apps. Do you think it was easier then or easier Are you now? kidding? A friend of mine that's 25 years old, he put me in, was it Grinder? Grinder. 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 You got a Grinder? He caught me oh. Grinder and Scruff. And what the funny thing is, he doesn't get any hits. I've had like 30 hits already. So then I need to wait with Grinder. <laughs> I need to wait a while and then I'll have Grinder, right? How do you think the evening went? I thought it went really well. Yeah, we were talking for a really long time, and then all of a sudden, Martha was like, I really want to work out. And I was like, me too. And so We're going to try and, and get together for yoga class this Saturday. I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah. It's a great idea, because we need to make young people realize what we went through and open almost like a family type of relationship, you know, like, Father and, father and son, but, you know, totally accepting each other, not with any, you know, homophobic uh, thing. And I, I hope that I can be... That person... That I Excuse me. I didn't have anyone to talk to. And I hope I can do that. For whoever. Sorry. It's okay.